and Scaler 454 here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are installing this Digitrax Evolution Advanced DCC starter set for our N scale layout. So stay tuned. So the first thing we're gonna do is open this up and see what we have inside. Okay. Well, right on the top we have this LT1 decoder and cable tester. We have our two foot uh, cable. Of course we have our DT500 controller. Right. We're obviously going to have a power supply. I don't even know how many amps. Six amps. This is our UP5 universal panel jack. It has the two ports. Of course, we have our command center, which honestly is quite a lot smaller than you would think. Now, here's where you're gonna plug in your cables. That's for your power supply. This looks like you can plug in your jacks. I believe you can plug it into any three of them, I guess. And um, then you have your scale set right here. So we have O and uh, G, N scale and H O. So clearly we're gonna be on uh, N scale. So that would be O, H O, N, and then sleep. Uh, OP and run. Okay, now there is no mounts of any kind on it, so mounting this on some sort of plywood or whatever, you'll just have to have it set flat, like so. And then the last thing in the box is we have the user manual and instructions. So pretty straightforward stuff. So I'm gonna give this a look, give it a read, and I'll get back to you. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out where to mount the command center, which has the three ports that we can connect our controller to. Now the kit does come with the universal port, like I showed you earlier, but I don't think I'm going to need it because, at least on my layout, I am eight feet from here to here and eight feet from here to here. So it's not that big. Um, so I'm thinking if I mount this in a somewhat central location, I should be able to reach. Now I do plan to expand the layout to pretty much double what this is now, uh, where I may need this later, but uh, I also may need a booster. So that's to, you know, we'll see how, we'll tackle that later down the road. Uh, I may still install this just to see how it works and to show you guys. So we'll come back to that. But for now, I think we should be able to mount this somewhat central because as you can see, controller has a long cable and it's accordion style so uh, it should extend quite far and I'm thinking if I put this here because I have a 2x4 right here that I can work off of I should be okay so if I'm at the far end of the layout here it seems I can still work just fine and if I go to the other end at least if this was in the right hand Again, I should be just fine. But most of the time, I believe I'm going to be kind of central, in which case, I think this will be quite perfect. So, I think we're going to go from here. So, I just need to start building some sort of frame here. And I think I'll build like a mini shelf with this piece of scrap wood that I have. Well, that was easy. I had some scrap wood laying around, and it seems to work perfectly. Put this in, and voila, it's a great fit. Now I can go ahead and route the wire for the power supply.
So I made these little blocks to act like terminal posts for my bus wires. And the way it goes together, you take your bolt, push it through the bottom, a couple of washers, and then let's say this is wired for our a positive, that will go straight through. And then we would have a third wire going to the distribution block that goes to the feeders. And then a bolt tightens those down, something like so. Pretty simple. Now speaking of bus wires, I am using 12 gauge stranded wire. And as you can see, I have wired in an inline fuse and I will be using a two amp fuse, which may or may not be enough, we will see. Uh, I am only putting fuses in the eight foot sections because those whole sections are connected with metal joints and, and, and the, all the feeders or whatever. So I should only need one fuse per section. So we'll see. But for now, I am just going to put some shrink tube over this connection point here and then we can move on with our wiring. I encourage keeping your wires as clean and organized as you can, but be sure to leave enough slack in case you need to move things around later. I drilled holes to run my bus wires through each section. For distribution blocks for the feeders, I am just using these 12-way blocks and they come with a strip that connects all the, the uh, terminals together. So one for red, one for black. And all you do, slide it in and away you go. Rough measuring your wires can help reduce waste. Because of the modular design of my layout, to be able to disconnect the bus wires, I am just using some bullet connectors just to keep things nice and simple. Now there's a few different ways you can run your feeder wires. You can attach them from the outside of the rail, like so, or you can attach them from the inside, like so. The benefit is I feel that this is perhaps a better, stronger connection. And also you can attach your feeders anywhere along the track after the track is laid down. Whereas this one, you have to solder your feeders before gluing your track down. However, I feel that this looks a little bit better, though I don't know what it looks like once uh, it's ballasted. 
Now I have seen a few people run their feeder wires on the bottoms of the rail joiners, and I suppose that works just fine. Uh, to me, it would be a little more difficult being an end scale, so I prefer this way. For the turnouts, I do not put feeder wires on the unifrogs because it gets power from all directions. But the electrofrogs, I do put feeders on. And I have made a video on how to wire that, so be sure to check that out. So how long should your feeder wires be? Might be a little bit of a debate here, but I have read that you should try to keep them at 12 inches or less, which honestly doesn't seem all that possible. Say I have a feeder coming from a distance from over here. Well, because I already have a three inch elevation, I'm dropping three inches, coming across a six inches or so, that only gets me to about here. And if my distribution block or whatever is in this section, well, I'm roughly 12 inches short. So in my opinion, one, keep them just as short as you can. But I think if you're 18 inches or less, you're doing good, but try to keep them under 24 inches and I can't see you having a problem. I should mention that I am using 22 gauge solid core wire for my feeders. Uh, I like the solid core because it, it's gonna be a little bit easier when you're soldering it to your track. I like to twist my feeder wires just so I can keep them organized and it makes them a little easier to route. I chose to strip the ends of the wires and wrap it around the terminal screw. It saves a little time and it seems to work just fine. Then I hooked up the feeder wires to the tortoise switch machines, which go to the distribution block. So we have it all wired up. You can see what we have going on. We have our bus bar terminal right here, which goes to our distribution block. We have feeders. We have our feeders coming from our tortoises that go into the distribution block. We have our fuse right here because this is part of one whole section. Uh, our bus bars that route all the way down and the other side so now it's just a matter of making sure this is all wired correctly and that it's actually working all right we are ready to test this out i have a intermountain uh, sd40-2 cp locomotive that uh, is ready to go so i'll plug in our command station which i'll see if i can do this one-handed here we go we have power flashing. We'll flip our switch, because currently it's in N scale. We'll flip this up to OP. I don't know what OP means. It must be some sort of standby. And then run. So on our Digitrax controller, we're gonna turn the power of the track on. And if we go down to our command station, we can see that the track status is yellow. So, we should, as you can see, we have our uh, um, locomotive engine number 5771 programmed in, 5771, so. I'm sure I need to do some really good track cleaning, but it moves. One thing that could be useful is to use a multimeter like this to test your polarity of the frog for your turnouts. So we'll turn this on. Now this turnout is set to go in this direction and because my inside wire is red or positive and my outside wire is black or negative, I should be able to touch the 
frog with the red and the outside rail with the black and I should see positive voltage. And there it is. So our polarity is correct. Now that we've tested the polarity, we can take our locomotive for a spin. And because we want to go in the reverse direction, we want to push this button right here. And then that arrow now goes backwards. So away we go. That is on power nine. So it made it through our spot where it's uh, split between the two uh, sections. The last thing I want to test is this universal panel, the UP5, to see how it works, how it plugs in. So we're going to take the two foot cord that came in the kit. We're going to plug it into our system. We'll do the A port. And then I'm going to plug it into the rear port. So if it's this one I'm going to be using, I'm going to plug it into this one like that. Then we'll take our controller. We'll plug that into the front. And it's that easy, apparently. So our Digitrack system tests out okay, which is fantastic. I can now finally run some trains, which I've been waiting to do for a long, long time. The first thing I need to do is go through all the track and clean it, because I haven't done that yet. And obviously we want Nice clean connections for a smooth operation. Another thing I need to do is wire DC power to our turnout motors so we can operate the switch machines with a switch versus manually. Uh, so that might be our next video. So be sure to subscribe to stay tuned for that. And if you like this video, hit the like button. And as always, thanks for watching.